It's the final word, New Zealand Australia Daily, day four of the Christchurch test coming to you from the very middle of Hagley Oval. There's the uh, there's the ground staff behind us, over my shoulder if you're on the video, having, having, a, sit a, on the, having a sit on the pitch and having a nice old time. A pitch party, remember a pitch when that party. was a thing? A pitch party. Uh, the show's brought to you by Seba Super <laughs> and uh, the test match is over in four days. We said it might be a belter of a day four. It was. Adam, please tell us all about it in the space of 30 seconds. Australia resumed needing 202 runs to reach their victory target of 279 with six wickets in hand. That was five wickets in hand when Travis Head spooned to catch to point in the second over after the delayed start. They were 80 on the board, five down in a world of pain. 199 to go. Enter Alex Carey under the pump. 98 not out. His best innings for Australia batted so well. Out of the 140 with Mitchell Marsh, who made 80. There was a late twist when Ben Sears took two in two. It was on a hat trick. They needed 59 to win. Enter Pat Cummins. 32 not out. Ice is another chase. He's fourth in the space of nine months. They win by three wickets. Goodness me. Goodness me. The point where, yeah, the two and two, and it's, al summary, it's almost... That was good, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in form. It was almost... It's a shame we're finishing up today. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a bit like Alex Carey. Your last hit of the season was a good one. Um, the, the, it was so nearly a hat-trick as well, because Cummins, yeah. Cummins reaches for the the slightly wider ball from Ben Sears, spoons it off the toe into the cordon and it bounces just in front mm. of Daryl Mitchell and goes through the cordon for four. Would have dropped it anyway. I mean, good... Sorry. Yeah. Good, I'm a good bit chance. down on New Zealand right good, now. We'll, we'll come to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, certainly on Daryl Mitchell's <laughs> slip catching, which um, did not did yeah. not go to plan. But Jesus, I mean, had he had he imagine a world where he takes that a hat trick at what <laughs> five down? Suddenly it's eight down for the addition of none. You would have seen a hat trick, mm. and um, they would have needed. 59 with two wickets in hand and Carey and Lyon trying to bat for the win would be a very different prospect from Carey and Cummins trying to bat for the win. It was so so nearly that situation. But even so, three wickets in hand, 59 to get. That is a difficult proposition. Mm. That is still bowling team on top. And they should have won it. New Zealand should have won it. Um, everybody was doing the thing at the start of the day. What do you think will happen? And, and I was like, look, there, there will be one bad shot and there will be one wicket and that's all they need. They break the head marsh partnership, then they should go through them. And they should have gone through them. Five in hand with 199 to get the batting team is not supposed to win that test match I mapped it out this is a seven down piece so last year when England were defeated by one run they needed 56 with the last three wickets remember it was 59 okay. today the tied test in 1986 funnily enough mm -hmm. went to that 16 to get with three wickets in hand mm -hmm. and 1960 slightly different chaotic last over seven runs to win when mm -hmm. um, the seventh wicket fell so this exceeded all of those but you know, they've got the muscle memory now. Mm. Mentioned Cummins and Bratz comparing him to Michael Bevan at the moment, and fair enough. It was the World Cup semi final. It was the Afghanistan. It's not left handed. It's not left handed. Not but he's just, Sorry. The way he puts pressure on teams when coming in at that point is, is such an impressive thing to do. I think it's because he's such a, a figure in the game. Like Cummins is such an esteemed figure. He's such a bloody good cricketer that even though he's coming in at number nine, he doesn't feel like a number nine. He feels like this is Pat Cummins, the mm. aura around mm. him and I think fielding teams to come to that a wee bit. Semi-final against South Africa, home in a close chase. Can't remember if they won by yep. three wickets or two wickets but it was close and famously last year putting on 55 for the eighth wicket with Nathan Lyon, for the ninth wicket rather at Edgbaston. So mm. Um, yeah, and this the is, Afghanistan game. And the Afghanistan game yeah. where he played shit anchor for two and a half hours with Glenn Maxwell. So there is a, a body of evidence yep. to suggest that Cummins is the perfect man for this situation. And Kerry, I mean, what a yep. time to step up. Yeah, I mean, look, Kerry, we've talked about it on this show, whether he, he was in the hot seat, as, as they've been liking to say, whether he was under pressure. Um, not, not so much the fact that he made three low scores, but the way that he made three exactly. low scores. Yep. Um, and even he sort of said after play, like, he was unhappy with particularly his second innings dismissal in, in Wellington and um, the way he hadn't got that shot right, the way he wanted to play it in the first innings here, there, there was pressure on him. And maybe the, you know, the fact that he kept well helped or whatever it was, but he's, he hasn't been... He's, he, He's had more good innings than people think he's had over the last sort of six to nine months. You know, the, the kind of po the idea that after Lords he's been shithouse. It's not true. He hasn't been. He's He has been in patches, but he's also had some really good innings in there as well that, that don't quite fit the narrative, so people leave them out or don't remember them or whatever it is. But this was so much better. He was so in control. He was so composed. And it was a daunting task when he walked out. And he said he was excited to walk out. Mm. Like, OK, I've got a big job ahead of me. Let's get into it. And he looked like that. He played like that. Found a boundary early. Um, didn't play a lot of risky shots early. He did start to branch out a bit as, as the innings grew. Um, but he had that, that sort of old carry ability just to tick it into gaps, just to make sure that he, suddenly he was in the mid-teens at about a runner ball, which is the mark of a good Alex Carey innings. Um, and that's what he did today. It was a starting partnership before lunch. Like they've added 94 in 106 balls from 5 to 80. So mm. the overall numbers are so impressive. I, 
I have a slightly different view about his first half an hour. I thought he did try and drive about five balls on the up, and you're like, man, you're going to get out the way Ravindra got out in mm. the first innings, and you're going to be out of the test team. He, he was under pressure, and that's a good thing. I, I sometimes find it odd when people get so offended by a player being under the pump. Being it's a competitive yeah. business. You know, yeah. if you're playing... Test cricket, it by definition, means you've won a competitive yeah. race against one or many other human beings to get there in the first instance. So the fact that and someone Josh else Inglis, is sitting there going, "Put me in, coach," <laughs> and yeah. the, you know the fact that Josh Inglis has enjoyed a really nice run for Western Australia at the same time, of course, that's a worthwhile and worthy conversation. I'm sure um, Kerry would know that himself within himself that that's true. So. There is that sense of needing to finish this run. Mm. This is the last test of a run. They've won six from seven. They've got all the World Test Championship points bar those at Brisbane. That's what they were setting out to do, to hoover up as many as they could to give themselves the best opportunity to make the next final, acknowledging they have a really tough draw from here playing India. doesn't matter that it's at home. It's India, five test matches, and then Sri Lanka away, which won't be a walk in the park. We saw that a couple of years ago in conditions that are going to turn. There'll be two sand pits at wherever they're played, I'm sure, to make the most of that home ground advantage. So with all of that in mind, this was crucial. Um, and Carey did step up. Carey did find a way, and good on him for it. And the fact that he had Mitch Marsh down the other end, we... Heard from, maybe it was Pat Cummins, possibly Kerry said yep. this to us on radio, that their game plan was to counter-attack this morning. Then this is where the head marshing was so kind of bizarre when they walked out at midday mm. an hour after play was scheduled to start. Consecutive balls hit straight to point in the air. Yeah. Marsh gets away with it. A shocker from Ravindra. It it's is defining. One of the most straightforward kind of point catches. That's exactly what, you know, if, you, if you're going to get a catch at point, that's the one you want. Maybe you want the little top edge that loops, but this was hit, not re really middle, straight at the sternum, like all, that, that's all you do. Had to right? move one foot to the other side and yep. Ravindra in the outfield was a liability at times through the test as well. We're, we're big on Ravindra. We, we love Ravindra's um, swagger and style and mm. back lift and stroke play and all of that. But yep. to say, you know, if, you, if you're yep. writing a school report, you would say room for improvement, room for improvement. In, in many ways. And look, if he takes that catch, then head's not at next ball. And, you know, we, we've had a discussion yep. on the pod many, many times about how things aren't linear look, when it comes to these types of things. We but went, we went back and forth over it. Um, I was talking to Brian Waddle about it. He's like, OK, well, so Marsh has cut a catch that's been dropped. Head's then cut a catch next ball and been caught dreadful shot by the way i mean both of yep. them were uh, it's just in terms of the timing like why why aren't you trying to keep that ball down at that time of day and neither of them were good balls from saudi either they were just sitting up there um asking to be hit but yeah so brian was like okay well who do you who would you rather dismiss like did, <laughs> would you rather have got marsh out or would you rather would you rather a game of would you rather yeah and and my response was okay well when when travis had goes big he makes 150 and when Mitchell Marsh goes big he makes 80 um, mm. and so that's the difference so I was like I, I as a as a as, as somebody on the fielding team I'd probably rather get Travis head out because he can totally win a game on his own I'm like Marsh can help them win the game but probably won't finish it off he got out for exactly 80 and I was just like you know sometimes you get them right sometimes it feels good most of the time you get them wrong sure. but um, there was that kind of feeling that that you know I mean Marsh is, is he's such a kind of booming player of the ball but he's got those 300s in his locker they're all against England he hasn't he hasn't gone big very often in his test career uh, so what he did was that was key though was keep the keep the scoring rate up so that he takes a new ball out of the equation completely they're never going to face a new ball because he's made that 80 in such quick time and because Kerry's gone along with him and done that yeah they've won the test in 65 overs so we're a full hour away from needing that and yeah most of that scoreboard pressure was applied before lunch where and I know there's a controversial leg before moment there and I don't want to get too deeply into that because it's so difficult with the camera angles we were seeing but you know specialist TV umpires etc etc you, you know what the, I'm going to say on, on that front uh, the, 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 the one with, oh, um, the the one with uh, Mitchell Marsh and Glenn Phillips and was the spike the bat you know well, okay, uh, I, I, and you feel for the third umpire because they're in an NVIDIA situation because yep. there's a spike therefore you've got to say with the ball nearby but yep. it doesn't look like it on the angle I, of the bat I you know spike, what I'm trying to say therefore I am yep. well we, we might as well get into it so, so Matt Henry comes back on having bowled a nine over spell the previous evening um, and looked shagged he gets one ball to jag massively smacks Kerry on the pad umpire gives it Kerry reviews it Kerry did not look at all confident he looked mm. like he thought he was out because he just it had come back in so far but actually it had done too much it had gone so far that it was missing the leg stump on the review so um, he gets away with that one one that was you know clearly correct on the overturn come on uh, Jim uh, yeah, I can yeah. see Jim wants to jump in come on mate pop in you haven't been on the pod for a while here's Jim Maxwell who's been on God knows how many tours of New Zealand. <laughs> um, give us your parting thoughts as you leave these shores again. Uh, New Zealand had a crack. But, you know, if you don't take your catches against these blokes, they'll make you pay, won't they? Mm. 
But what I love is the pluckiness of Pat Cummins. His first test, winning runs. Mm. Edge Baston, winning runs. Today, he was a dead set certainty. You couldn't have got any more money on him to hit the winning runs in this game. So it was a wonderful finish for him and the Aussie team. I thought despite the fact that their top order batting is crap, uh, they keep winning. So they won't change the team, will they? I doubt it, Jim. You go off with Wads, we'll go get a quarter your ladder on. Enjoy it, boys. Nice. How good is that? So, Thank a, you, Jim. A cameo with Jim Maxwell on the ground as we wind down the series. We've got plenty to talk about still. Jeff, uh, have you finished what, saying what, your piece on the review? Okay, so, there, so there's yep. that one, which is which is a, a nice, clear, clear, easy overturn. It's missing those stump by a mile. And then Glenn Phillips comes on. And uh, before I get to this, my God, Tim Southey, captaincy, absolute dross today. Absolute mm. garbage today. And it is easy to make judgments after the fact but you could see this before the fact Glenn Phillips tied Mitchell Marsh in knots during the World Cup when they played at Durham yes. Shaler Marsh was like 35 or 55 balls after coming in with Australia going at 10 and over Phillips bowled 10 overs straight 3 for 37 and Mitchell Marsh could not score a run off him and he gets Alex Carey out in the first innings here with a ball that turns that dreadful shot that, that lobs into the hands in mid wicket Travis Head gets out You've got Carey coming in and Marsh coming in. What do you do if you're a captain who's got some smarts and who's actually considered the context? Who you got to call? Glenn Phillips. Dare I say matchups? Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. And Phil Busters. And Phil Busters, though, that's, that's us talking for a really long time. Uh, just didn't bring him on. He brings him on when they both passed 50. Carey and Marsh have both got half centuries by the time Phillips comes on the bowl. And he comes on the bowl. What does he come on the bowl? One over before lunch. Straight right over before what nearly, is, and nearly gets Marsh in the process, which is which is what brought me to this yeah. in the first place. But Jesus Christ, like that's the that's like the 1910 MCC captaincy handbook. Oh, why don't you give one of your spinners an over before lunch? Like that's what you do if the spinner is Travis Head, not if the wicket that's fallen is Travis Head. Like you give that to a part timer to see what happens. That's like that is such old fashioned, dull, boring captaincy from someone who only thinks about seam bowling. Uh, I, I cannot believe that he didn't try Phillips against him. He's taken five for at Wellington. He's got Kerry in the first innings here, um, going for bugger all off the few overs that he was allowed to bowl. Why, as a bowling captain, are you so reluctant to bowl your spinner? Because you don't have a specialist spinner. You've got this is the next best thing. Ravindra didn't bowl at all. Like Maybe it's worth having a try with the left arm stuff. It was so unimaginative, just colour by numbers captaincy. Mm. It was dull. And, and you know, frankly, they deserve to lose based on that. Well, there, there are so many other reasons why they didn't deserve to win. And that, that pains me to say it because yeah. you, know, you rock up here this morning and you're thinking about the history and what it would mean for world cricket. And I don't want to patronise New Zealand because it's not reasonable to do that about a side that won the World Test Championship only three and a half years ago, mm -hmm. whatever it was. Not even that, two and a half years ago. But against Australia, there's this huge block. They win here. They're in second spot on the World Test Championship. Mm -hmm. Australia with work to do. They might make the final again. They dropped this because of the waiting in a two-test yep. series. And they're a long way off now with five tests coming up in Asia. Yeah. Uh, and look, how they go there will dictate whether they make it through. But I wouldn't say they're, uh, I wouldn't say they're likely um, to do well in India based on what India do to everyone mm -hmm. who rocks up there. And eventually they marmalise them, right? Yep. So there's that going on. Then there's well, the drop catch piece. There's yep. the you know the Ravindra drop, which feeds into a wider story here about the big moments. About when the when the biggest moments were there throughout the course of the two Test matches, New Zealand, with the exception of yesterday, weren't up to it. Mm -hmm. The biggest moments. I think you made the point a few days ago. New Zealand are at their best when they're way behind in the game, and that's when they rally. Mm. They can't get ahead in a game in the way that they need to to put themselves into a match-winning position, and when they need to finish the job like they did today, they couldn't do that either. So. Yep. Yeah, this is a side that's in transition. Saudi is the captain at the moment, 100th test. Is he in the best 11 for Asia? And he's got a good record there, but, or are you taking Sears? I don't know if he's in the best are you, 11 are you ripping, here. Are you, well, put it to one side. Are you taking, now that's in the rear vision mirror, are you taking Sears out of law school for, for a few weeks and mm. going, uh, Ben, uh, we, we, you know, you can do some study abroad. You can go and study at you know, the University of Mumbai for a semester. Mm. We need you to play a couple of test matches. Yeah. Um, I would say I'd that. study at the University of getting panned <laughs> around some grounds in India. Well, he, in the, in I, I think he'll probably reverse it. Yeah. I, my sense watching him bowl over the last four Will or five he days. lay it down and flip it before he reverses <laughs> it? And I rock last week as well. You know, this is all in the future, but sure. they, they wilted at the big moments. He did stuff up last night. Yeah. I understand the tendency. I understand the desire to try and break Australia from 32 for four. Bowling Henry into the ground last night, mm. nine overs. He did look shot today. Bowled from the wrong side of the fucking wicket to Alex Carey. Why is he bowling around the wicket to a bloke who's trying to flay you through cover on the up? Mm. Give your slips a chance. Mm. Have more than one slip. 
at the end when they need to get there's like 30 nearly, or 20 nearly or 30 got runs him with to get the, with the ball decking in though 20 so or 30 runs that. to get and there 20 or, yeah, the one that decked away oh, right. and it didn't go to like there, there are so many little yeah. inflection points and the last thing I'll say on this yep. the last thing I'll say on this New Zealand bit before we move off it is Daryl Mitchell on our coverage after play today um, uh, uh, you know it would have been nice to have won but we're not going to be defined by our performances at the fucking you're game not, of cricket. You're not going to be defined by, by your performances. By definition. By your are, results? By definition. You're, you're by their results. Right. My apologies. Okay. We're not going to be defined by our results. Okay. I mean, that is just mumbo jumbo. You, of course you're going to be defined by your results. When you is... got your feet up when you retired and mm. when you're long gone out of the game, he went on to say lovely platitudinal things in relation to uh, bringing young people out here and enjoying yep. the contest and being part of a great test match. Great. All, of, all of that's true, yep. but there you are. You are. The, you are defined yep. as an international athlete by what you do uh, when the big moments arrive. And, and, and it drop helps. catches and it, poor decisions and six for, eight for 60 on the first day when, yep. the, when the heat was on. These are the bits that will be remembered from this test series. Not the nice rally at Wellington where they batted for an hour without losing a wicket mm. on the third afternoon. Probably not Tom Latham 73 yesterday, as good no. as it was. They'll be remembered for what happened when they lost the Test match, not when they nearly got back yeah. into it. If you want to bring people through and all the rest of it, it probably helps to win. It's it's not the only thing. Like you can you can win and still be a team of pricks, as we've seen from many Australian teams. And in the you past. can and you can be a team um, of really nice blokes like this Australian team at the moment who've changed the way they go about it and be bloody successful yeah. as well. Win but, ugly. So you, yeah, you can you can be a successful team that still alienates people. Yeah. Um, but you are more likely to not alienate people if you are a successful team. Does that make sense? Is that a, is that a reasonable yeah. way to formulate it? Um, I did want to touch on that DRS thing because I didn't get to it earlier because I think it is worth talking about. This, okay. this is Phillips coming on, bowling to Mitchell Marsh, who's hit on the toe, just bounces in front, so it's not the going on with the arm thing, but the ball looks like it's going pretty straight. It's hit him in front of middle and off, and he's got the bat somewhere near it, um, and it was, it was given not out, right, and they review it. And there's 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 a burble on the on the on the sound graph as it sort of goes near the bottom corner of the bat, which is called a spike by the third umpire, who kind of yeah. has to because they have to, but it isn't. I, I I'm very confident from having spent a lot of my life looking at sound waves and, and the different way that they work that that is that's a different sound. That's a foot moving on the ground or that sound wave or festival a, or a bad sound wave <laughs> festival. Um, they, not, I R.I.P. It, I don't think it panned R. out R. too well. I feel no, like the last gone. couple <laughs> things didn't go well. I can't remember expressly how. It's in the big music festival in the sky with Big Day Out. Am I thinking of Stereo Sonic? What did they used to call it? Steroid Sonic. Um, <laughs> was what, what it was called. It was all the dudes in the tiny singlets with the big biceps doing, the, you know, get, is, into it. Um, yeah, R.I.P.Z. is all I want to say. Get the glow sticks out. Steve O'Keefe, um, <laughs> secret set, 3 a.m. <laughs> now dropping. Um, it, I, I think that. I mean, we didn't see the ball tracking on it, but it looks like it was probably going to be out. I think it probably was out. Um, and and again, it, it's 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 that the technology they have isn't actually up to distinguishing what's going on in those situations where there are so many moving parts in terms of what has made a noise. All it can tell you is that a noise has been made, but I don't think it was a bat on ball noise, and and the pictures don't seem to line up. Yeah. So we're not audio experts either, right? So we're not saying that, oh, well, we think it didn't hit the bat there. Well, I did say that. Yes, yeah, but we're, just right, but you're not saying that <laughs> you're not saying you're an expert in sound technology. I'm not an expert, but I right? know a bit more than the average person. Is all. Okay, but there are people who know a dance like more than sure. you as well. And Let's put them in there. Yeah. Let's get the guys in there or the girls yeah. in there or the robots in there. It could yeah. be AI. Get whoever it is mm -hmm. in there who can make that distinguish, mm -hmm. distinction yep. and get them up there. Even if it's alongside, like I've softened on this a little bit, if you want to have your existing third umpire mm -hmm. in collaboration with sound technicians. Yeah. You featuring. Know, featuring. Third umpire, feet. <laughs> Sean Paul. Maybe the other way around, you know, audio technicians featuring Michael Goff. Um, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, the, the current system as it is. Anyway, it, it wasn't a huge part of the day, but it did at the time when we went to lunch. Have you heard the new collab between Michael Goff and Lizzo. <laughs> Be still my beating heart. Um, it, it, right, so anyway, then they take the two wickets and you think for a minute, you know, 59 to get yeah. on the hat trick, the, the ball that gets Marsh, which is just too quick and too good, and I love Sears, I love everything about him. I love his emotional response when he takes wickets. Um, there yep. is something there, there is a yep. proper sort of test cricketer um, oh, in all of that package. And but, it, but, but, I just want to go to one more thing though, Southie fucked that up as well. You know, Sears takes the two wickets, bowls another over, bowls another over, add another, add another, add another, and he's knackered by the end. Mm. As Jeremy Coney astutely pointed out, if you had to whip him off with, say, 30 or so runs to get, you have one more pop with Henry down at this end, or, 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 or someone else, or Phillips, you still have time to bring him back for one last push. Yeah. There, there, was, there was a chance for a two-spell yeah, yeah. 
uh, you know, a two-stop strategy, with, if you like. The chance that he's bowling to Nathan Lyon at that point or Josh Hazelwood. Exactly. Yeah. The chance that he's bowling to 10 and 11 yeah. and he can come on with four runs to get and bowl an in-swinging Yorker and mm. win the Test match with the yard Shemar that he's got Joseph and it. the other ones don't have. And yeah. they, and that was another... I don't want to get the boots completely into Saudi in a 100 Test match. Look, he, he, he took... A wicket to open things up today. Match. It was a great test match, but I think with the benefit of hindsight, he'll reflect on some of those bits and pieces as well and what the future holds for him is yet to be determined. Mm. He said he wants to continue, though. I think he was asked in, in the press conference, Brat told me that this was put to him, whether he might retire, and, and that's um, he's got no current plans for that. Well, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know how closely they will look at it because so many players that we talk to go, oh, no, everything's good, everything's fine, um, we're totally confident with everything. And, of course, they can't give too much away outward-facing to media people, but... There, there is a there is a tendency just to back what they're doing and, and not necessarily reflect on it. But uh, anyway, they, yeah, it's that it's that point. It's it's the pace to Marsh that that swings in and it's hitting him on the pad and it's umpires mm. call on leg stump, but it's given out on the field. And then it's pace at Stark, who's probably just blinking a bit, having you know not really expected to be out there so quickly. Um, who's who splices it away to square leg, three to get, fifty nine to defend, but they don't. A few other bits and pieces before the Hall of Fame. You look at Australia's last five wickets through the series. 227 in the first innings at Wellington, 37 in the brain explosion innings second time around, 98 here, which was important in context at the time after they lost some early wickets on the second day, and 199 they needed today. They got 201 because Cummins won the game uh, with a boundary. So their lower order has probably outperformed their top order in terms of runs yeah. acquired for the final five wickets. That's been a sign of Australia's strength as well. Hazelwood, high score for six years. Stark, made 28 in the first innings. Cummins makes 70-odd runs for the Test match. Lyon made it to 20 twice in the series. So, you know, they're, they're pulling their weight on that front. Um, I've got... Josh Hazel would average more than most of the top order. Oh, um, player of the series in a losing effort to Neil Matt Henry. That's a nice rarity and oddity. But oh. 17 wickets at 14, I think it was. And yeah. um, you couldn't doubt that he was a candidate. I, I did think maybe Nathan Lyon, 13 at 12 and a half, plus a 10-wicket match, runs. plus some runs. Also, Josh Hazel would took Henry his wickets runs too, though. at 17. Uh, Henry, Henry did... To be fair, Mike, and so he did made, Hazelwood. He made 40 odd cumulatively in this test match, plus 42 in Wellington, plus another few in the second innings. And Green as well with the other one, given just how important his solo performance was there, plus two wickets with the ball. Look, there wasn't an obvious candidate, so it's a split the difference thing, but Henry wins that award yeah. for the first time. Who and, played um, really well in both test matches? Matt Henry. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That, 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 that's fair enough. I think um, that's. Well, that's let's, let's go to the Hall of Fame. All right. The Final Word Hall of Fame for the final time in our daily shows for the time being, although we will talk about them in more depth tomorrow. Seabus Super, um, as we say, you know the story. 8.89, average return, 40th birthday. My 40th birthday this year as well. Um, but I'm not, you know, I'm you're still... Not, you're not an industry super fund. I'm not an industry super fund. I'm a you're, human you're being. You're part of an industry I'm a super human fund. being. I'm a part of one of these yeah. ones. Um, as you're also bus, made up of human beings. Industry yeah. super funds are, are comprised... Of human beings. A real human being and a real hero. Um, that song at the end of Drive. Great flick. Uh, they, Seabus, celebrating this year, partnering with us as they have. They make this kind of stuff, along with our patrons, possible that we can travel around and cover games and, and do the things that we wish to do. So we thank them for it. Um, get your super sorted out. Do it in 2024. Do it in an anniversary year. Do it in a milestone year. Seabussuper.com.au. Yeah. Let them take it from there, or you can get in touch with us even after um, we finish talking about them. If you, in a month's time, wake up and go, fuck, should have sorted my super out. I've got mm. to do it then. We will still be able to put you in touch with the right people. Their past performance is not a reliable indicator of future performance. I've just got a couple here, Jeff. First of all, okay. fa Aussie families out there. I think um, Alex Carey's young lad stole the player of the match trophy and was running around the field. He's, he stole one of the other... No, because they got <laughs> had two trophies. There, oh, right. there was the... the, the actual trophy and there was a sponsor's trophy. Oh yeah, the Trans-Tasman, which was quite nice and then the one that's named after some meat. Some chicken, a chicken <laughs> some supplier. Chicken. <laughs> yeah. How yeah, about the thousand bucks for, um, was it the player of the series, Matt Henry got a thousand, a thousand bucks, bucks worth of meat. Okay, yeah, nice. There All you right. go, have that. Um, yeah, fresh, yeah, keep keep yourself in, in good nick over the off season. <laughs> you could have thrown the hat around. Eat a barbecue chicken every day. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, what do they call it? The bachelor's handbag. Bachelor's handbag. The supermarket yeah. roast yeah. chook. <laughs> Nonetheless, I, I've got one. It also involves Matt Henry because everything's involved Matt Henry recently. Um, you know, the, 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 the sort of the cliche of the nice New Zealanders. I did the, had a little chat to him for, for the radio afterwards. And my God, it is, it is like distressingly true he was so nuts for a guy who's just taken nine wickets in a close loss you'd expect like pain you'd expect anguish 
big smile on his face. He was like, ah, oh, you know, yeah, pretty frustrating. But uh, look, we, you know, we, we did everything we could. We threw everything at him. We couldn't quite get there. And he, he's holding his little baby and she's trying to grab the microphone and eat it and you know, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. But he was just, he was just the, the nicest and most patient person considering I probably wouldn't want to talk to somebody had I just taken, you know, this, this, is, this is a dream different scenario. But <laughs> so you play that well in a match and not quite got there and everyone else has buggered it up and let you down. Like, I probably wouldn't be having, wanting to have chats with people mm. from the broadcaster from another country. Yep. I probably wouldn't be doing that. And, and yeah, I was, I was, I don't know, I was deeply impressed by his, his demeanour. I'm his impressed by them being, I'm impressed by that too, but I, I sort of come back to my earlier point. Is that a symptom? Mm. Is, at some deeper level, is that a symptom that, uh, you know, I don't want to sound all sort of like puffing my chest out, you know, uh, um, nonsense, uh, fake machismo stuff, but like, should you, shouldn't they be fucking despairing at that point because of what's happened? Oh, he, he was definitely like, yeah. unhappy. He, yeah. just, he just was was very generous in, yeah. in that unhappiness. Yeah. You know? Anyway, um, that's the end of this. Oh, sorry, one more thing. I saw, I saw Adele Moray Rasmus's wife on the way out there. She's um, She was so happy for him. Yeah, she was yeah. so happy for him that he... Um, that he had a good test, and he did. They both had good test matches, or better than good. I thought they were. They did a great job. The on-field umpires, Nitin Men and Maria Rasmus, were well served across both tests. But Ray, do you finishing... think her song is rock and rolling in the deep? <laughs> well, he's, he's, you know, I, I don't know. My head's all over the place right now. Maria Rasmus gets to go home. He turned yeah. 60 last week, the big boy. Mm. Um, that's his last test match, 82 and done. I know we've talked about it on the pot already, but. Um, yeah, I'm glad that he had such a good test and uh, he was the one who gave that decision where Marsh was out on 80. It was umpire's call and it was his call mm. that Marsh was gone. Yep. And it's our... I thought it was a right decision. It looked good. It was swinging back looked in a little me. bit. It was quick and it bashed the pad in front of middle and leg. And That's it gave okay. us the chance for a couple of minutes to dream of a tie in a test match. And a, and a, It'll happen one day. Yeah, and a hat-trick. <laughs> and a hat-trick. And a hat-trick. Uh, That's it from New Zealand. We'll, well, not strictly true. We're going to record our... Um, our weekly episode from our Airbnb, I suspect, tomorrow before we, um, well, you hit the road and I jump in a plane and we do other things. We'll do a story time then as well. Cam and Vish have done the wrap-up episode from Durham Shala, if that's your vibe. Uh, we've got a lot to come. Uh, but, uh, yeah, last thought is that I've loved being here for Test Cricket again after eight years. It's such a shame that we don't know when the next in, uh, New Zealand-Australia Test Series is. It should be every fourth year. There's no reason why that these teams shouldn't be playing each other on the same cycle as as uh, England, Australia and India do. Hopefully um, the administrators who are out here doing their thing this week can, can have those conversations and we can get closer to that because, yeah, this is this is the least Australia can do is come over here every fourth year. It's the final word, New Zealand Australia Daily. Day four from Christchurch signing off from this series. If you like what we're doing, patreon.com slash the final word. Thanks to CBUS, Jeff Lemon, Adam Collins. See you later. Bye.